Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing holiday season. I know that we are right in the thick of the holidays right now and I don't expect a lot of people to watch this video and if you are particularly eagle-eyed you will notice that I'm wearing exactly the same clothes that I did in last week's Sunday Musing and that's because, yes, I am guilty of batch recording these because well, it's easier because we're all taking some time off for the holidays, so we're kind of buffering things up so I don't have to work during the holidays either, but we're still pushing out content to keep the mighty algorithm happy. Anyway, that is not the subject of today's video. Today's video, we're going to be talking about living your life without a car. So, for those who don't know, obviously right now, I live out in the country and I have multiple cars, right? We have the, the F-150 Lightning, we have the Project Honda behind me, which I know we need to do something with, but we just haven't had the money to work on it. And we have the Bolt EV. And that's before you even consider all of the, the press cars that are regularly here. So for me, we have cars. We, we drive them most days and we have to go run errands and we live a good 10 to 15 miles from most things that we need to go to to see fairly regularly, be it the doctor's surgery, the vets, the, the grocery store, the post office, they're all a ways away. But what you may not know about me is that I grew up in rural East Anglia in the UK. I grew up in a little village um, just outside of, between Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft, and I grew up in a carless family. I grew up in a family where we got rid of our car, I think it was 1983 or 1984. I was very young. I remember it. It was an old Saab, but we got rid of it because it was constantly breaking down. My dad didn't have to drive to work. He could walk to work because he worked on the farm. And my mum hates cars. My mum's always hated cars and she couldn't drive anyway. So my dad was the only person in the family who could drive and it wasn't until my elder sister got her driving license in 1989 that we had access to a car in the family by which point I was 10 and then when we moved when I was 11 12 we moved a little closer we moved just outside of a big city in uh, in the UK um, well big city for where we lived it was Norwich so just south of Norwich we lived and I was about a half hour walk from the outskirts of town and about 45 minutes from the city center 45 minutes to an hour depending on how quickly I walked a lot of the time I used to walk or run to get to appointments in town on time and obviously growing up we learned to rely on public transit so there was a train that used to go past the, the next town the next village over had a railway station and we used to catch the train into Lowestoft from that railway station um we used to take our bikes on the train. My dad was a, a real kind of um, an expert at packing uh, a shopping trolley, which he would then balance on the crossbar of his bike. And we would ride home with the shopping on our bicycles. So we would get the train from Lowestoft to, to our nearby town, uh, nearby um, village. And we'd get off the train and then we'd bike the last three or four miles home to our house and that was my reality until we moved just outside of Norwich and then I would walk catch buses and cycle everywhere my mum still lives in that area and she still gets the bus if she needs to go into town and it kind of got me thinking about what what would it take for us to live without a car and I think we've come to the conclusion here. There's no public transport. There's no uh, railway station nearby. The nearest bus is five miles away. So we would have to cycle down the hill. And um, here in, in North America, certainly, I don't know if I would want to cycle down to the nearby town, although I've done it on a nice day you know if the weather's nice I've, I've I've cycled to my opticians before on a really nice uh spring day but for the most part I uh, unfortunately I'm guilty of of taking a car and sometimes I think maybe we should be looking at alternatives maybe we should be trying to cycle wherever possible walking 
when possible. And here in the US, when you buy a house, in a lot of states now, they give you a cycle walk score to tell you how easy it is for you to get around without a car. And with gas prices in in fluctuation over the last 12 months, I know now gas prices have dropped significantly, but over the summer they were extremely high. I think more people have started to think about micromobility, electric bicycles, electric scooters and getting around. So I am curious to know from you in the comments below what you would require before you would start taking public transit more, before you could live a car-free existence. Could you live a car-free existence? I know a lot of people watching this just couldn't for whatever reason. Maybe it's for mobility issues. You, you don't have the mobility that would be needed to take public transit. Maybe it's for practicality purposes. You live way out in the middle of nowhere like we do and, and there's no public transit anywhere near you. Or maybe it's that you regularly have to carry a large amount of stuff and you just can't imagine living without a car to take all of that stuff. I understand that, um, but with electric cars being so expensive still and with, you know, continuing pollution problems from internal combustion engine vehicles, we do need to start coming up with alternatives. I used to own a, uh, a bicycle trailer that I loved and now I'm losing weight. I'm actually really getting into cycling again. Um, I used to own a bicycle trailer that I used to put a bassoon, clarinet, flute, oboe, several oboes in fact normally, a couple of saxophones, different sizes, all of my, what I would call my posh teaching clothes. So a nice outfit for teaching in schools, um, nice clothes, uh, shoes, waterproofs and my lunch and that would be when I graduated from music college and I still didn't have a driving license that was how I got to work I used to leave my house at five in the morning I would cycle 10-15 miles to my local train station the bike trailer folded up so I'd be there on the platform having dismantled my trailer having dismantled and taken everything out and when the train came in I just basically threw everything onto the train into the luggage compartment took the train to where I needed to go got off again reassembled it on on the platform and and took off that was how I got places and there's a photo somewhere in fact if you go to my aminorjourney.com blog I will try and remember to put a photo of me and that that trailer on there but it was longer the bicycle and the trailer was longer than my first car so there are always solutions to live car free. And I, I'm starting to think that we need to start doing more of that as a society. And I'm starting to also think that Transport Evolved needs to start looking more at micro mobility and personal transit solutions that don't include cars. That doesn't mean we're not going to carry on covering cars because I think they do have a part to play. But I also think that uh, public transit and Micromobility is really important moving forwards, especially, especially as automakers have failed us and they're not making electric cars affordable. They are continuing to keep prices of EVs high for whatever reason. And there is a video coming about that in the new year as well. Why the electric car you want isn't here yet. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little more in the future. But until then, I hope that if you are celebrating the holidays, that you have a wonderful, peaceful and safe time with those you care about. And I hope that you can also find it in your heart to make sure that those who don't have others to look on, look out for them are also safe and well and healthy. It doesn't take much to keep your eye out for others, especially at this time of year, especially when the weather is so absolutely terrible. That is it for today's video. If you liked it, you know what to do and feel free to leave your thoughts below or in the Discord chat room. And if you'd like to, you can send us a super thanks. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow to become a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member. There are links for those two things below. You'll also find links below to Kofi, Bitcoin and our swag store. And do check us out on Mastodon. We now have our own Mastodon server. It's very cool. 
it's becoming a little bit more popular. People are interacting with the show and also with the hosts, so myself and Kate, and also with Michael, our cameraman, and Erin, our, our artist. So we'd love you to join us over there. Scrolling on my rides is the list of amazing Charged Up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters, Mike Weeder, Patrick Boyarski, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mura Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asentar and Jim Burness. Finally, Super out of this world thanks to our top tier supporters Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Barrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnek, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. I will be back next weekend with another roundup. There is some holiday themed content coming your way very soon, but until next time, keep evolving. Keep evolving.